Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Zoom. Praise the Lord. Zoom. Prophetess Brown. Praise the Lord. Sister Jesse. Amen. Praise the Lord to you, you, and you, those that are streaming with us, those on Facebook. I want to say praise the Lord um, to you, uh, to those that are, are looking from all of our uh, streaming areas. We say praise the Lord to you. Uh, we want to thank God for each and every one of you. Um, that are here, uh, that have uh, just took your time to come and, and, and worship with us. Uh, we just want to say praise the Lord. We want to say uh, that we love the Lord that's in you, and we thank God for allowing us this opportunity um, one more time just, just to be in his presence, to be able to uh, conduct um, Bible studies. It's a blessing to be able to be here Amen. On such a platform, amen, to uh, deliver, expound on, and to uh, rightly divide uh, the word of truth. It is definitely an honor um, and a, a privilege, and we don't take it or you uh, for granted. So, again, we say praise the Lord to each and every one of you um, for being here. I can't, I can't see y'all on on Facebook. Um, Sometimes it gives me the numbers, so excuse me for not um, acknowledging the names. Um, I haven't got another device where I can link on and actually see um, you there, but I know that you are there. Amen. I believe Lady Stone is on the Facebook platform. Um, so uh, praise the Lord to each and every one that are still tuning in. I see my numbers going up, so we say praise the Lord. Amen for what he is doing in this season. Um, those that of you that are YouTube, amen, praise the Lord to you as well. Um, God is just doing great things for us, and, and we're just excited and we're glad about it. Uh, because he said he would do it, and he's just performing those things that he already said he was going to perform. So uh, my words to you is don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Amen. So as long as you keep pushing, he's pushing for you. He's pushing you through so that we can survive. Amen. We're, we're so grateful to be here. We're still in the book of Romans. We're still in the 13th chapter. We're about um, the 11th verse, I believe, in the 13th chapter of Romans, around about verse 11. We'll dig into that today. God allows us his grace, his mercy, and his anointing. Uh, we'll do exactly what he has called us to do. Uh, teach this great gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I, I got a song. It's, it's, it's an old song. You know, I don't pass it up. Get some new songs, y'all. Yeah. It is an old song. Uh, we at least sung this one way, way back, way back in the day. We still, we still sing it now every, every once in a while. But um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a favorite, but it's a favorite of mine. It's been in my mind um, uh, a little all day long. Uh, so if, if you help me, we'll get we'll get through this. Amen. Um, right here. So come on, sing with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. I know y'all know that one. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on the teacher's journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Be my friend, Lord. Please be my friend. Yeah. Be my friend, friend, oh, yeah. Be my friend. While I'm on this business, she does Journey, I want Jesus. 
again. She'll be my friend. This is my favorite part right here. You'll walk with my mother. Yeah. Please walk with me. Yeah. You walk with my mother. Lord, walk with me. Oh, I love all this. Get a motion. Oh, my God. She does journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you for your presence. Oh, my God. Thank you for your anointing, God. Thank you for dwelling with us. Thank you for this appointed time. Oh, God, that you have appointed, that you have destined, that you have preordained. And, God, we give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise because there's none like you. Oh, you're so wonderful, God. You're, you're so marvelous, God. Your works are so beautiful and matchless is your power. You, you are God and God alone and we bow in obedience unto you for you, God, are the ruler. You are the orchestrator, God. You are the leader, God. You are the planner, God. Oh, God, you are our victory and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this Bible study. Oh, God, anoint your man servant right now. Oh, God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, give me clarity of speech. Give me precision of thought. Oh, God, and while you're anointing me, God, give me full authority in your word. Allow me to rightly divide the word of truth. God, encourage somebody. God, enlighten somebody. Lift somebody. Heal somebody. Deliver somebody. Oh, God, make tears, God, turn into laughter. We decree it right now. In the name of Jesus. We pray, amen, amen, amen. We excited, we're grateful, amen, to have you, amen, with us. Uh, and, and we are, like I said, we are, we are still, amen, on the 13th chapter um, of, of, of Romans. And, 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 and just give me uh, one second, we're going we to jump right in, amen, to this awesome word, amen. I, I know, amen, that the word of God Amen. It's, it's right all by itself. We know that the word of God, amen, is, is just, it's just beautiful. The word of God is just so, so powerful. And then we, and we just, we bless him. We, we thank him. Um, I'm, I'm checking my, um, my, 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 my Facebook now because I want to make sure um, we was having um, uh, some, some uh, members and friends that was not getting access, uh, and I don't know why um, that was going on. I'm trying to make sure that I am public um, on this platform, and I should be. But uh, if if you are trying, if 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 you have issues, let let Pastor know just so I know um, what's going on and I know how to correct it. Uh, so we we thank God, Amen, for you, you and you, Romans, um, the thirteenth chapter. Um, Lady Stone got me sweating in his home. Amen. We're going to be all right. Uh, Romans, the 13th chapter, if you're with me, uh, we're going to be at verses um, 11 through 14. Uh, Romans, the 13th chapter, uh, verses 11 through um, 14. Um, and Lady Stone, if, if you're listening, I need you to come in this section and, and, and fix my ear. Amen. You can keep it how you want it in your section, but in my office, I need you to, to, to I turn it down, turn it down somewhat. I don't care what numbers on past need some more. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. I pay the bill. I can I can I can afford it. Amen. Just get comfortable in here. Amen. So Romans the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 14. Romans 13, 11 through 14. Amen. And I pray that you already have it. And the word of God reads, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. 
Lord have mercy. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But pit ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I hope, I hope you're ready. Paul, Paul, Paul is, is, is trying to get our attention. Paul is trying to get our attention. He's getting us to try to understand some things. Uh, so when, when, when we read verses um, 11 through 14, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's just, uh, and this is pa it's Pastor Stone, it, it, it's, it's four visions or, or four illuminations that, that we should see, okay? It's, it's four things that, that should be very um, evident um, to us when we, when we read that. But first of all, the picture one, um, when we read it, it's sleeping versus awakening, okay? Uh, 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 verse 12 is, is, is darkness versus light. Uh, and then verse 13 is, is, is walking straight versus walking crooked, okay? And of course, verse 14 is, is, is clothing, uh, pitting on the Lord Jesus Christ versus pitting on the flesh. So, so, so right away, uh, we, we're at a place where uh, our, our visuals should be uh, focusing on um, our walk and, 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 and our uh, persona and, as is revelant to the Lord Jesus Christ. Us as Christians, that that should be our main focus. Our main focus should be to be like Jesus. Our main focus should be how am I viewed? How, and it's not about, oh, I don't care how other people think about me. Well, you should. You, you should care how other people think about you because how other people think about you reflects their mindset. And, and we don't take down, but if we close ourselves with, love and clothe ourselves with grace, um, they should see us as a child of God. So every believer should care what people think about them. We don't take down or take shortcuts to 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 actually make people want to like us or be with us, but our walk, our talk should be uh that in a way that people should gravitate to us. Because love gravitates. Love gravitates. If, 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 if you're a believer, love should be engrafted in your heart, in your spirit, in, in your soul. Your conversation should be love. Everything about you should be love. And that's where we are heading towards. So it is time to understand the, the, the critical period of, of history, okay? Uh, the believer is to know the time. Timing is very important. It's the utmost of importance, okay? Uh, the, the word uh, knowing, it comes from a Greek word uh, called erodotes, which means to make sure that you know. Make sure that you know. I love that uh, 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 understanding. Uh, do not dare knowing. The word time in Paul's statement uh, comes from a Greek word, two words, time, charon which means the critical period, the strategic or special period of time. Uh, so right now, uh, the people of God, we're living in a time, carry on. We're, we're living in, 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 in a strategic, oh my God, moment of time. And, 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 and if you're connected with the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sure you know and you can feel the timing that he is soon to come. We got we got tragedies, we got things happening all over that should not be happening that wake up our eyes to let us know that this world, amen, is twirling out of control. And and God is going to come back and reclaim what's here. So so uh, what strategic or critical period of time is, is meant? What what is the period of human history that we must not overlook. First of all, we have to understand it's the day of our salvation. 
of the day that is nearer than when we first believed. Listen, you're closer now to your end than you was five years ago. The day that is at hand, the day when we will meet uh, the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Not from a Bible, not from what the preacher says, but I'm looking for a face-to-face -face encounter. Is, is there anybody with me that's looking for a face-to-face -face encounter? I, I, sometimes you can feel like Moses saying, hey, listen, Lord, I, I, I did everything you asked me to do. I, 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 I'll sacrifice what you asked me to sacrifice. Listen, I know I messed up. I, I know you, you told me speak to the rock, and I hit the rock. I, I know I got frustrated, but I, I believe that I, I was good enough to you. I, I believe that my relationship was strong enough with you that you can show me your glory. Oh, my God. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to hear, amen, uh, the, the strong voice that you have. I, I, I don't want you to write, amen, from heaven anymore. Tablets, what I want to do, I want to see you. I, I need you to show me. Oh, God, your glory. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for him to show me his glory. So we have to understand that it is time to awaken out of sleep. Too many believers are slumbering. Too many believers are, are paying no attention to what is going on in the world. Too many are not watching. Too many are not observing the signs of the time, too many are complacent and slowful, laziness, and, and passing through life with little commitment to serving Christ. Yeah, they'll come to church, but you can't get them to do nothing. Uh, they'll come to church, but you can't get them to stay. Uh, they'll come to church, but you can't get them to be involved in anything. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. you, you well, let me, let me not get into that, but you can't know somebody unless you're willing to spend some time with them. So we have to get a man out of our comfort zone so that we can draw souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, too few are meeting the needs of the suffering and dying masses all over the world, people of God. It is time for us to awaken out of our sleep. It's time for us to wake up, to be aroused, to be stirred. It's time, amen, to get up and move. It's time for us to act. It's time, amen, for us to do what God has called us to do before it's too late. The exhortation that Paul is giving is strong, and, and there are two reasons for the forcefulness that Paul is using. Our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The word salvation here is being used in a future sense, referring to the glorious day when we shall be fully saved. Is the day when our salvation will be, if I can use the word consummated, we will be delivered from this present evil world and uh, perfected forever to live in the presence of God. The point is very dramatic that Paul is trying to get us to understand, and I'm going to say it again, the day is nearer than when we believe. Awaken out of sleep, arouse yourself, get up and pay attention to what's going on. Look at the world situation, look at yourself, look at life and its uncertainty, look at the signs that are going around, look at your body, look at our body condition, look at the time we're in, look at the condition of the world. If you don't know that we're closer now than when we first believed, you must still be sleeping. I wish I could get some folk to wake up and understand that our salvation, amen, is near. The day of salvation, the day of our redemption is nearer than when we believe, amen. Dr. Luke said in Chapter 20 and 28 of Luke. Amen. Uh, and when these things began to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Hebrews 1 and 2 says, God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. 
things by whom also he made the world. First Peter, the first chapter, verses 5 and verse 6 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations or trials. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. For John 2 and 18, I, I just want to let you know that judgment is, is at hand. The, the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. What day? The day uh, when we will meet God face to face, either through our personal death or through the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But time is fleeting. It's passing ever so rapidly, not only for a group of people, but for everyone. So what are you saying, Pastor Stone? I'm saying it's time for us to stop playing and start preparing. It's time for us to start preparing, oh my God, to meet our maker. It's time for us to get our affairs, oh my God, in order. It's time for us to get our salvation tuned in. And it's time for us to stop, amen, uh, leaving, amen, the plow and, and, and focusing on other things and coming back. The Bible says a man that fitted his hand to the plow and turned back is it, not fit for him. Anything. So we need to stay focused and stay committed to the cause. What's the cause? Amen. Getting ourselves together to meet our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got to wake up. Amen. Spiritual darkness is all over the land. There is a sleep of false security, the sleep of slowfulness, the sleep of complacency, the sleep of neglect and the sleep of indifference. Uh, in verse 12, it talks about the darkness to the light. And I want you to know that it is time to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The, the works of darkness are those things that men do under the cover of darkness, the things they want to keep secret, that there that, that, that are sins that, that, that men and women want to hide. There, there are sins that men know are unacceptable. There are sins that men know will cause hurt. There, there are sins that men are ashamed of, that men fear the results of. There, there are sins that men know, amen, will do great damage. The Bible tells me in John, the third chapter, verse 19 and 20, and this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Okay, so we have to understand that we have to, it may be a separate entity. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 11 and 12, says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Don't, don't even speak about it. That's what the Bible is saying. First Thessalonians 5 and 7 says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Or we can even go back to the beginning, the beginning, Genesis 3 and 8. Amen. The Bible records, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. See, we're coming into a time now where, amen, the uncovering is about to happen. So before the uncovering comes, God is telling his people, prepare 
yourself. Make sure your foundation is sure. Make sure your foundation, amen, is what it needs to be. Make sure that your foundation, amen, is on a ground that you can be proud of. If the Lord Jesus was to come right now, would you be ready? We ain't got to hold our hands. We ain't got to talk to our neighbor. We ain't got to high five nobody. You have to be accountable for your own soul salvation. Your, your neighbor doesn't matter. Your, your big mama doesn't matter. Auntie Sue doesn't matter. It does not matter how much they pray for you. Every man has to be accountable to God for himself. You have got to to work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. We have to understand that the armor of light differs entirely from the clothing of darkness. Uh, the, the picture is that of clothing oneself, okay? So the believer is to strip off or to take off, amen, dark sin and works that has wrapped him up and that has, amen, hindered him and has weighted him down and he's to take those off and he's to cast them away. And once he has stripped himself, the question arises, what is the believer to put on after he's taken off sin, after he's stripped himself of darkness, after he's come out of gossiping, after he's come out of lying, after he's come out of fornicating, after he's stripped himself, what, what is he to do? He, what, 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 what he puts on is striking. He is not exhorted just to just put on the clothes of the light. He is told to put on the armor of light. The believer is to be clothed with the heavy shield and protective armor of life, a shield and protection so full of splendor, so full of glory, so full of brilliance that it cannot be penetrated by the works of darkness. What is the armor of life? It is the armor of righteousness. Second Corinthians 6, amen, 4 and 7. And says, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God by the word truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand, on the left hand. So it, 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 it is the armor of God, it, it, it is the belt of truth, it is the breastplate of righteousness, it's the sandals, amen, of the gospel, it, it's the shield of faith, it's the helmet of salvation, it's the, oh my God, it's the sword of the spirit, it, it's the word of God, it's the supernatural resource of the soldier, amen, that supernatural resource that every soldier of God has is prayer, so my question to you is, how's your prayer life, uh, oh my God, because if your prayer life is not consistent, uh, if your prayer life is not continued, if, if your prayer life is not sustainable, uh, amen, how do you expect, amen, the armor of life to do its job, you, you have got to get your prayer life in order. We have got to be ready for the Lord when he comes. So Ephesians 6, 10, and 11 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8 tells us, but let us who are of the day be sober, pitting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the helmet of salvation. It is time to walk straight. You can't walk straight with sin on your life. The word honestly, amen, it comes from a Greek word that's pronounced eskomonad, which means proper, honorable, decent, and noble. So the believer is to walk in honesty before God, living a life of honor, uh, living a life of decency and nobility. 
Uh, he is the walk in the day, not hiding nor trying to hide anything. Scripture gives, amen, six sins in particular, which the believer is to cast off and turn from forever. Not just today, not just this week, but forever. So it says rioting, uh, amen, which is, amen, the Greek word for that is cosmos which is rebelling or carousing, partying, feasting, intemperance, amen, unrestrained reveling, uh, indulging or giving license to basic urges. And scripture to back it up is Galatians 5, 19 and 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The second one is drunkenness, which is from the Greek word metheus, which means to take intoxicating drink or drugs to affect the senses and faculty to become intoxicated for the purpose of lust or pleasure, to seek to be tipsy or seek to be intoxicated, to seek to loosen moral restraint for the sake of bodily pleasure. And the scripture reference for that is Luke 21 and 34. It says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with the fighting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that they come upon you unawares. First Corinthians 6, 10 and 11 says, nor thieves, nor covet, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. So I, I wish somebody would understand it's not about what I was, it's about who I am. As long as we are seeking, amen, to change our ways, as long as we are seeking, amen, to, amen, please the Lord Jesus Christ, as long as we have repented of our sins, amen, went down in water, amen, in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and have been filled with the Holy Ghost. I wish you could tell somebody I'm no longer the person that I was. I've been changed. I've been bought with a price. I've been redeemed. I've been reconciled. I, I've been forgiven. I've been picked up and I've been turned around. My, my destiny has been changed. My outlook has been changed. My persona has been changed. My mindset has been changed. My language has been changed. My walk has been changed. My circle has been changed. Everything about me has been changed. I come to let you know, amen, that unless we've been changed, uh, unless we've got a story behind why we're here, uh, amen, we're not going to make it in, but you got to come out from amongst them and be ye separate, except the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. He said, I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my son. And Lord, as we have to understand that the third one is chambering, which uh, from the Greek word is, is kotaxis, which means fornication, sexual immorality, adultery, amen, premarital sex. And the scripture for that would be Romans 1 and 27. And, and likewise, also the man leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another man with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Uh, the fourth one is wantonness, and the Greek word for wantonness is as a G as, which means ring wild, amen. Uh, 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 this lasciviousness, living a wild, amen, immoral life. It, it, it is excess lust. It is unbridled lust that 
consume one's thought and behavior through their looks or through their dress, through films or pictures, through gestures, through partying, through books and pamphlets, songs, music, talk and jokes, and their personal behavior. James 5 and 5 said, ye the rich have lived in pleasure on the earth and been one time. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of sort of the second Peter 2 and 18 says, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are law through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness. Those uh, that were clean escaped from them who live in error. And number four is strife. Number five is strife. And the Greek word for strife is eridain, eridain, which means contention, quarreling, arguing, striving. It is the craving deep within a person that wants a recognition, that wants honor, that wants position that wants authority. It, 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 it is a spirit that is constant, uh, in constant competition with someone else uh, that wants to push forward no matter what the cost. You got some people right now that if they're not involved in it, they don't want nothing to do with it. If they didn't call the shots, they don't want anything to do with it. If they wasn't on the front line of it, they can't be supported. That's the wrong spirit. You can't be a leader unless you learn how to be a follower. You, a good leader knows how to follow. That's how he became a good leader. You can't learn a job and get promoted unless you know how to follow the instructions on the job. The, the reason that you get promoted is because you follow the instructions so well that they say, okay, we got to give them something else to do because they perfected the job that they were in. I, I wish we could get some spiritual people to get that mindset on, yes, I'm anointed, but if I perfect this anointing that God has given me, if I perfect the gift, oh my God, that he has given me, then he'll increase me. He, he, he'll elevate me. I, I won't have to fight for a position. I won't have to fight for a title. I, I won't have to fight for a name. I, I won't have to push somebody out the way so they can recognize me. I believe the Bible when it says that my gifts will make room for me and bring me before great men. Listen, if you're a child of God, you ain't got to fight for nothing. Because God, oh my God, I felt that in the spirit. God has already ordained your place. He, he's already ordained your statue. And let me say this while the Lord is speaking in my ear. The reason why it did not work is because God has greater for you. The reason why, oh, how I see her. The reason why it didn't pan out is because God has greater. The reason why it didn't come through and didn't connect is because God has greater. The Nobo Shire, the reason why folks are turning their back on you, the, the reason why you feel like you're all alone is, is because God has greater. The repositioning, the pruning, the thrashing is coming in your life. Why? Oh my God, because there's a prepared place that God, amen, has prepared for you. And it's some people that can't go to it. God, amen, has called you to go. It's some people that can't handle the next level of anointing that God has placed in your life. It's some folk that's around you that have been dream killers from day one. And God is trying to pull you out to put you in a place where he can speak to you, where you can move according to his spirit. I don't know who I'm, I'm talking to, but God wants you to know, amen, don't you give up. Uh, that just wasn't for you. I know you wanted it. I know you saw it, but God said, I got greater. I, I got better. I don't want you to sell. I, I don't want you to have stuff. I've created something for you that's, oh my God, that's just for you. That's just, oh my God, that's just for you. We have to understand that God knows exactly what he's doing. That's why, amen, they said in the old day, let God be God. Let God direct your steps. Let God lead and guide you. Everything we do in life as believers, we have to not only factor in Jesus, but we have to pit him first. We have to pit the Lord first. We can't pit him in second. We got to factor Jesus in First, we, we, we can't ask them after we make the decision. We got to include him in the question. We got to include him in the process of decision and let him lead and guide us into where he wants us to be. 
So we, we have to understand, amen, that strife, strife is the next one. Uh, uh, contention, quarreling, arguing, striving, amen. We, we we pushing one another, amen, forward. So uh, it, it, it's all right, amen, to try to get ahead, but not by putting others down. That's not God's way. Not by by having other people. That, that that's not God's way. Not by ignoring other people. That that that's not God's way. Not not by holding others back. That's not God's way. Not by blaming others. That that's not God's way. Not by neglecting others. That that's not God's way. Uh, uh, Philippians two and three. Amen. Says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 4. Let me read this. It says, of these things, it's done in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, as they strive not about words to no profit, but to subverting of the hearers. Okay? And the next one is envying, and envying, the Greek word for that in Paul's context is the law, which means jealousy. It's a jealousy that begrudges others. It looks upon the position, the recognition, and success of others with a jealous eye. It regrets the success of others, all right? Scripture reference for that is 1 Corinthians 18 and 4. Charity, love, suffer long and its kind. Charity, envy it not. Charity, vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. Galatians 5 and 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. James 3 and 14. But if ye have bitter envy and in strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. Uh, the, uh, we have to understand, amen, that those things, amen, the Bible specifically lets us know that we have to throw off. We, we, we can't walk in the fruit of the Spirit with those things on us. We have got to rip those off and not wear those garments. Those are garments that you outgrew. Those are garments that's too small. Those are garments that's not in style. You need to take them off, rip them off, burn them. Amen. And ask God to, amen, give you a new wardrobe. To give you a wardrobe of holiness. Oh, my God. To give you a wardrobe that consists of the armor of Life. So the spiritual clothing that we need to understand, it, it's time for us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to make no provision for the flesh, okay? So we, we have to understand that we ought to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the picture is that of clothing uh, and clothing ourselves. Uh, we ought to clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We, we ought to be as closely bound to him and his righteousness as we are to our clothes. It, yeah, you, you have to understand you get dressed and you put on your shirt and, and you button it up. You, you want it to stay on your body. And there's no point in time, amen, that you want to be walking anywhere or be anywhere, amen, and your clothes just falls off. Your clothes should be so neatly and so perfectly fit to your body that it should not only act you, but it should draw attention to you, not, not that other kind of attention, but the attention. If we clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he should be so close to us that he can't be ripped off. Sin cannot enter in because I clothe myself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus becomes our clothing. As our clothing, he touches us. As our clothing, he protects us. As our clothing, he warms us. As our clothing, he covers us. As our clothing, he hides us. As our clothing, he surrounds us. We are wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Being in him means that we live, we move, and have our being. A man in him, in his life and thoughts and behavior. Therefore, we must 
They may look only at that which is upon uh, things and things that he would look at. We, we, we must listen only to that to which he would listen. We, we must talk only as he would talk. We, we, we must touch only that what he would touch. We, we must eat and drink only what he would eat and drink. We, we must think only, amen, upon what he would think. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses four, Ephesians chapter four, verse 24 says, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, Col Col Colossians 3, 10 and 12 says, and have put on the new man, which is new in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. And Luke 9 and 23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We must not make provision for the flesh. So the idea here is that we do not give into the flesh and the fleshly lust, amen, that comes, amen, through our day, amen. We must put on uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 5 and 29 says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. That was Matthew 5 and 29. Romans 6 and 6 says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we have to understand that the believer, amen, is, is putting on that armor of God, putting on that clothing of God, amen. We have to understand that the believer is to put on and be endured, amen, and endured with or clothed with within the Holy Spirit. The believer is to put on and be clothed with the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. The believer is to put on and to be clothed with immortality. The believer is to put on and to be clothed with the new man. The believer is to put on and be clothed with the nature of God. The believer is to put on and to be clothed with the armor of life and the armor of God. The believer is to put on and be, to be clothed with love, we have to understand that unless, amen, we have loved one for another, we are not going to make it. We, we, we can't keep doing what uh, we used to do. We can't, we can't keep doing everything that we think, amen, we can do. But it's time for us, amen, to forget about what people have told us, forget about what we think we know, and get into uh, the Word of God. We, we have to get into a man, the unadulterated gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we have got to get into the word of God, the old and the new, the 66 in total. Amen. We have got to get into the, the word because the word is the power of God. It, it's not what somebody wrote down in an external book, but these are the words of life. Uh, they're good, amen, they're profitable, amen, they're good for teaching, they're, they're good for re rebuke, they're good for exhortation. Anything you need is in the word of God. We have got to understand that the enemy wants us to keep putting on that old clothes. 
amen, the enemy does not want you to realize, amen, that God has already advanced you. But I need somebody to understand that where I used to be, I am no longer there anymore. The things that I used to do, I no longer do anymore. Don't you allow the enemy to hoodwink you and bring your past into your present because, amen, where you was is not where you're going. Yes, yes, we've had some offset. Yes, yes, we, we've had some things that we've done that we wasn't proud of. Yes, yes, we had some times, amen, that we fell off and we lost focus. Yes, we, we had some times where the Lord told us go right and somehow we ended up going left. That, yes, yes, there, there are times that the Lord had a blessing lined up for us and we wasn't accountable and we didn't show up to get the blessings that God had for us at that time. But I want you to know that you didn't miss anything because God, amen, has for you what is for you. And it does not matter how upset the devil did it. And it does not matter, amen, how much you on his so-called hit list, amen. The Lord, amen, has protected you. And he said, I'll let no harm come near your dwelling place. We have to understand, amen, that everything that the enemy has portrayed, amen, against us, God, amen, has given us a shield. And the reason why we have the shield of faith is because there will be some uh, enemies, some some darts, some some weapons that come toward us. And amen. We have to learn how to use the shield of faith. How do you use the shield of faith, Doctor Stone? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Uh, when the enemy says, "Amen," that you are afflicted. Uh, amen. The shield of faith allows you. Uh, Amen. Not to go cry in the corner, but the shield of faith allows you in boldness uh, and in clarity of the spirit uh, to say many of the afflictions, oh my God, are of the righteous, but the Lord uh, delivered him out of the all. Uh, what does the shield of faith really do? Uh, when you sit in your body, it's the shield of faith uh, that says he was wounded for my transgression, uh, bruised for my iniquity, the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes. I am healed. See, it's the shield of faith that allows you to understand and comprehend what the enemy is telling you, but it's the shield of faith that allows you to look past uh, your present condition and see the end. Uh, see you in the wilderness, but also see the past. Uh, see you in the desert, but also see the streams. Uh, oh, yes, I'm still in the wilderness, uh, but I'm not going to be in the wilderness like everybody else was, uh, because because I'm clothed in Jesus, uh, the wilderness has a path for me, uh, which means I'm not going to get lost in this thing. I, I'm not going to get misguided in this path. You see, the Lord ordained me to the wilderness, and if he brought me to it, uh, he's going to bring me through it. I, I, I might have ended up in the desert place. Uh, see, but people die in the desert. Why did they die in the desert? They died in the desert because there was no water. They died in the desert for dehydration. Uh, but because I'm clothed in Jesus, uh, I can be in the desert. Uh, and the effects of the desert that kills other people will not be able to kill me. Why? Because while I was in the desert uh, and others didn't have water, I looked to my right and there was a stream. Oh my God. I, I looked to the left and there was a stream. I, I looked in front of me and there was replenishment of water. What I'm trying to tell you is don't give up because of what you see. Uh, all you have to do is be about your father's business. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Don't you let nobody tell you that this is your end. Don't you let nobody tell you that you're not going to make why? Because they don't know your story. Uh, they didn't write your chapter. They didn't write the verse. Uh, they have no idea what your tomorrow is. Amen. Offices. Uh, but the Lord knows your tomorrow. He knew, amen, you before you was in your mother's womb. He, he knew, amen, your accomplishments uh, before your first words. He knew your trials and he knew your chest. And yet he gave you victory. Why? Because you did to clothe yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I come.
come to let you know that it's time for the people of God to strip themselves of the world, to strip themselves off of the envy, and to strip themselves off of the jealousy, to strip themselves off of the malice, to strip themselves off of immorality, to strip themselves off of the nastiness, and put on the armor of life. If any man be in Christ, the Bible declares he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. What we have to focus on on this day, this time, is not even focusing on our mistakes, not focusing on our hang-ups, not, not focusing on our past habits, not, not focusing on the things that we did not accomplish. But in this day and age, we need to focus on pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We have to focus on pressing on, amen, to see what the end going to be. We have to focus on grabbing somebody by the hand. It, it don't make sense for you to make it by yourself. We need to reach, reach way back and grab somebody that's struggling, somebody that lost their way, somebody that can't find hope, somebody that don't have anybody in their corner, somebody amen, that's about to give up. We need to grab them by the hand and say, if you don't have the strength, amen, just hold on to me. The Bible says, let the weak bear, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. We have got, amen, to reach back and grab somebody. Heaven wasn't made for us by ourselves. We have to bring somebody else. We have to encourage somebody else. We have to uplift somebody else. All of this comes into your character. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you put on the armor of life, it's time for us to wake up and look around us and see what's happening in this world. And know that we're closer to the end than when we first believed. What are you saying, preacher? <laughs> I'm saying he's soon to come. And he's not coming looking. He's not coming searching. He's not coming picking. He's not coming at that time to wash away your sins. He's coming for a church personal church without spot blemish or any such thing. He's coming for somebody that has prepared themselves to meet him, that has denied themselves daily, taken up their cross and followed him. Does not matter who goes with you. It does not matter who focuses on you. It's about you and Jesus. It's, oh my God, it's about your relationship. And uh, he knows you. Do you know him as your personal sake? If you don't know him, it's simple. You just got to talk to him. Talk to your Savior. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me, clean me. I want to be saved. Tell him, I've sinned, and I need a Savior. I need you, Jesus. I know you love me. Please come in my heart and save me. Save me from my sins. And get yourself in a Bible-based church under a pastor that preached the word of God. And grow daily so that you can make it in. It's not his will that any be lost. Clothe yourself with the Lord. Jesus Christ, and I promise you, your tomorrow will be better than today. That's what it's all about. Amen? That's what it's all about. It's about us making a path and a way for others to follow. Some people won't even open up the Bible. The only Bible they're going to see is your life. The only Bible they're going to read is what you do, what you say. So show them that Jesus loves them through the love that you have. 
for yourself first and then for those around you. Listen, I am Dr. Alexa Stone. I am the senior pastor of Upper Room Worship Center. Amen. And I'm telling you, if you can get to our location on Sundays morning, our 1045 corporate prayer, amen, is something you don't want to miss. 1045 corporate prayer, 11 a.m., amen, is our morning worship service. You need to be in the house. If you want to feel the authentic anointing of the Holy Ghost, you need to be in the house. If you want to hear a word from God, you need to be in the house. Come where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Thank you so much. Amen. For all the followers, for all those that have been contributing, for all those that have been praying for us. We love you so, so very much. And we know that God is going to pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Listen, Tuesday, noonday is our noonday prayer. You're right here on Bible study. Don't miss out on Sunday. Amen. The first Sunday in June, we're coming back to Christian education. Yes. Upper Room Worship Service, Upper Room Worship Center will have our Sunday School Christian Education back intact, 9.45 a.m. The first Sunday in June, we will be there. Amen. We will be, we will be excited and going through the Word of God, getting much learned, getting our questions answered. Amen. And just getting into the knowledge base of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, Pastor Stone loves you so much. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, come on, stick it. Whichever platform you're in, stick it in those comment sections. Pastor Stone will get to it. Thank you so much, amen, for everything you do for the kingdom. Thank you for everything you do for me, my family, the ministry that God has blessed me with. Listen, we pray for you, and I'm praying that, amen, that you are praying for us. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. If you're on Zoom, come on to Zoom. Let's get these Q&As answered. Amen. Let's hear, amen, what God has been blessing you with. Amen. And I know that God is going to do it. Amen. For you, he's going to do it for all of his people. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. I love you in Jesus' name. I hope you share this with somebody. Amen. God bless you.